Since their first appearance in 1930, e-cigarettes have come in various forms. They first copied the looks of a conventional cigarette, with a cylindrical shape and tips that light up. Then, they shifted to more box-like designs, with little nicotine content and high vapor levels. When Juul surfaced, however, it changed the game entirely, delivering an impressive nicotine punch with low amounts of vapor and in considerably less time. Coupled with its elegant, high-tech design and a range of exciting flavors, many have jumped on the trend, including adolescents. Now, parents and school authorities across the United States and beyond are nervous about how many kids are getting addicted to Juul. The original idea for e-cigarettes was to help adult cigarette addicts quit smoking. According to Juul.com, the mission of Juul Labs is to transform the world's billion adult smokers away from combustible cigarettes, eliminating their use and combat underage use of their products. But its efficacy is questionable. Vaporizing or vaping is a term used to refer to the kind of smoking only accessible through the use of unique digital devices called vape pens. They are also called e-cigarettes and have been in existence since the 90s. Since the evolution of e-cigarettes, many brands have jumped on the bandwagon, gaining acceptance and utility as years have passed. They even became valid alternatives to regular smoking and were prescribed by therapists to addicts. But none blew up quite like Juul. Co-founded out of PAX Labs by Adam Bowen and James Monsies, Juul Labs is an American e-cigarette company that manufactures vaping devices. They atomize nicotine salts from tobacco and deliver them via single-use pods or cartridges called Juul Pods. Following its inception in 2015, Juul became the most popular vaping device in the United States. This was thanks to its sleek design and portability. It looked like a flash drive or computer device of some sort that people can carry around easily and without fear of social stigma. It also came in various flavors, including mango, cucumber, Virginia tobacco, mint, and creme brulee. This made the product really exciting and desirable. It was unlike anything ever seen before. It was not smoking. It wasn't vaping. This was Juuling. In October 2018, Juul Labs purchased VMR products in a $75 million deal. VMR products were authorized to sell e-cigarettes under the Chinese State Tobacco Monopoly Administration and marketed products including V2 and Vapor Couture, amongst others. Its popularity attracted the attention of major companies like Altria, one of the world's leading cigarette companies, which purchased a 35% stake in Juul Labs for $12.8 billion in December 2018. This investment was made due to the fact that many smokers were making a shift from regular cigarettes and were taking up their electronic variant. Also, Altria's e-cigarette product, Mark 10, was not really doing well in the market. The partnership between these two companies raised the value of Juul Labs to $38 billion. It also went a long way to prove that e-cigarettes and conventional cigarettes were the same, despite several e-cigarette companies claiming to be the exact opposite. Altria's involvement in Juul's production and distribution allowed it to be sold in more regions, thus reaching a vast, more complex market. In recent times, established firms such as Fidelity Investments and Tiger Global Management have invested and remained in partnership with Juul Labs. The company launched into the markets with solid strategies to win the people over. First, they took to social media platforms and hired influencers to advertise Juul Pods. They portrayed Juul as the future of cigarettes and the best alternative to regular smoking. For a more powerful emotional pool, Bowen and Monsies told the story of having been addicts themselves. Smoking was always a contentious issue in my family. And how Juul Labs was birthed out of a desire to help millions of addicts quit the habit. More so, Juul Labs has received severe backlash for putting out advertisements that targeted teenagers and minors. 
Ignoring the massive effect of social media on teenagers, Juul employed predictive programming involving the use of celebrities, young models, and social media influencers. They effectively conveyed the message that you could vape recklessly and stylishly too using Juul pods. Essentially, if they were vaporized, you should be too. Juul Labs had bought spaces on platforms like Seventeen Magazine and TV channels such as Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. They also secured ads on several gaming, entertainment, and educational websites, such as CoolMathGames.com, aiming at minors and high school students. Their advertisements were unlike now and portrayed themes like sharing, travel, relaxation, attraction, and sex appeal. Yet, Juul Labs claimed that their products and advertisements had never been intentionally aimed at the younger generation. Instead, they claim to have been oblivious to the fact that they were raising a new generation of nicotine addicts. Or were they? Thanks to Jules' relentless efforts, the children began to cave in. Slowly, minors and school children became their most prominent market, earning them a 72% market share in the e-cigarette industry by September 2018. To further consolidate this stance, Juul Labs began physical one-on-one -on -one advertisements where a representative would be sent to schools to lecture the students on the harmlessness of Juuling. Speaking at a congress in 2019, a student proclaimed that the Juul representative's reaffirmations in his school were a sigh of relief, especially for those who had already started vaping. It turns out that Juul's advertisements really misled the children. They thought Juul Pods were indeed totally safe and only contained flavor vapor water, as opposed to the nicotine they believed could harm them. This is where Juul's deceptive advertisement became evident. There hadn't been a label warning people of the nicotine content on Juul Pods as there is now. One Juul Pod contained at most 5% nicotine, equal to the amount of nicotine contained in two packets of regular cigarettes. Given these facts, severe health consequences weren't far from sight. By this time, it was relatively too late. Teenagers and youths had already gotten hooked on Juul. It had become customary for students to hide Juul pods and other vaping devices in plain sight and use them at home or during school hours. It became a social symbol, idolizing freedom and adulthood that was not yet attained. Moreover, its design and ease of concealment made it even more difficult for the kids to quit or for the parents to discover. At the same time, the same features that made Juul a high-tech product also make it attractive to youngsters, most of whom have never vaped or smoked before. This is an apparent contrast to Juul's acclaimed purpose of turning adult smokers away from smoking. It has instead succeeded in achieving the exact opposite and has now introduced a whole new generation to nicotine addiction. This has not gone unnoticed. Jewels are distinguished from other e-cigarettes in that they use nicotine salts rather than a free-base nicotine to mimic the effects of traditional cigarettes. Because nicotine salts are less acidic than free-base nicotine, they are easier to inhale. Furthermore, nicotine salts are absorbed into the bloodstream at a rate comparable to traditional cigarettes. Users may be unaware of how much nicotine they're consuming due to the lack of irritation and ease of inhalation. Because Juul contains such high nicotine concentrations, the nicotine-related health consequences of its use by young people may be more severe than those of other e-cigarette products. So, in April 2018, the US FDA requested Juul Labs provide documentation regarding its design and marketing to understand its appeal to youths better. Following this, the FDA demanded unlisting Juul's products from online stores and platforms such as eBay. Juul was then asked to take down flavors and designs that may entice the youths. Concerns were expressed over Juul's ease of discretion and how much nicotine just one pod was able to deliver. In a counterclaim, Juul Labs stated that its design was intentionally made more cubed than cylindrical to help addicts forget what it feels like to handle regular cigarettes. This claim changed nothing. 
Juul Labs still face three lawsuits over its excessive nicotine content and how potentially harmful it could be to the younger generations. In response, Juul Labs pledged $30 million to a campaign in partnership with the FDA to help keep Juul out of the hands of young people. They also announced the raise of minimum age for purchase of Juul products from 18 to 21 years old. The FDA quickly followed this up by issuing warning letters and fines to stores that still sold Juul pods to underage customers. Furthermore, Juul Labs shut down its Facebook and Instagram accounts, which promoted the use of flavored pods that could entice adolescents. They replaced them with the more standard advertisements using models only over 35. Juul packaging now compulsorily carried warning labels reminding consumers that the product contained nicotine. Also, Juul pods containing lesser amounts of nicotine have been developed. In September 2022, Juul Labs agreed to pay $439 million in settlements to 34 states and territories over marketing to underage youths. This is coming up after two years of intensive investigations into the company's marketing and sales practices by the US FDA and other regulatory bodies. And while this does nothing to eradicate the youth addiction to nicotine spurred by Juul, U.S. lawmakers insist that the only way to curb the widespread epidemic is to take the products that are causing the problem off the market. However, officials claim it is a significant move to hold Juul accountable for its actions. If you like this video, be sure to check out the next video we made about Honda.